did so in tears shall reap in joy. They did so in tears shall reap in joy. They did so in tears shall reap in joy. The Lord hath done great things for us. Where are Please come over here and let us pray with you. Please let us help you. Know that no murderer has eternal life abiding within them. You will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every one of you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We don't want you to stand before that judgment seat with the blood of these babies on your hands. Ladies, you must understand that the Bible says, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Ladies, you, you need to fix your eyes on the things that are eternal and not on the things that are temporal. You can't put off till tomorrow or put off till your future the things that need to be done today. And today you need to think about your eternal well-being you need to think about your eternal salvation. And one thing you must understand for certain is the Bible says that murderers will not inherit the kingdom of God. That murderers have no eternal life within them. And it goes without saying as science has proven and it's no longer even a valid argument those of you that say this baby is just a fetus or it's a clump of cells, science has proven that life begins at conception. You won't find a biology textbook that argues otherwise. Life begins at conception. And it's not your place to take the life of the womb, the life of the womb that God has created. And God says that he giveth life and he taketh life away. It is him that killeth and him that maketh alive. And he's made this child alive in your womb. 
And it's not up to you to take the life of this child within your womb. Oh, but ladies, when you take this life in your womb, it makes you nothing less than a murderer. Nothing less than a murderer if you're snuffing out the life within your womb that God has created. And I want you to understand that I'm out here because I love you this morning. I'm out here because I love you and I love that life within your womb. And it's good that somebody loves that life within your womb. Because if you're going to take that life within your womb, you sure have no affection for it. Oh, but ladies, I care for you as well. I love you as well. That's why I tell you these things. Understand that no murderer has eternal life abiding within them. Ma'am, if you're pregnant this morning, know that child is a gift of the Lord. Ma'am, do you not believe that black lives matter? They must also matter in the womb, right? They matter over here on this side of the fence. No, oh, but ladies, we care for your soul, and that's why we lift up our voices this morning. We care for your soul. We care for your salvation. We care for your eternal well-being. And understand that the Bible says now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. It doesn't say tomorrow. It doesn't say next week. It doesn't say whenever I feel like surrendering my life to Jesus Christ. Whenever I feel like uh, denying myself and taking up my cross. But it says now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow might not be acceptable with God. But he says right now is his acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Why? Because tomorrow is not promised to you. Tomorrow is not promised to any man. And understand that it's appointed unto every man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. You will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And you will give account for the blood that's on your hands. The blood of this innocent child. No, that's fearful. It's fearful. The Bible says it's fearful to fall into the hands of a living God. And you don't want to fall into the hands of the living God with the blood of His innocent creation upon your hands. That child that's created a Mago Day, created in the image of God, an image bearer of their Creator. It's God that gives life and God that takes life away. You must consider your end, ladies. You must consider your end and lay down your arms of rebellion Consider your end and understand that one day your life will be required of you. Now what I find very ironic is that you don't find the life of this child within your womb valuable. But yet you consider your life valuable. Now if someone was to put a gun to your head or if your life was in grave danger, you would plead for your life. You would weep and you would cry. Perhaps you would say, I've got a husband. I've got a mother and I've got a father. I've got brothers and sisters. I've got a family. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Because you have value for your own life. But yet you find no value of the life of this child within your womb. Don't believe the lies of the enemy that tell you these babies are not viable until they're born. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. God finds value in these children as He's created them and gave them life. As God has knit them and formed them together in the womb in His image. God finds value in these children. If you don't find value in these children, God, their Creator, the one that has given them life, finds value. And that's all that matters. It's all that matters. Because that same God that finds value in these children, when you stand before Him on the day of judgment with the blood of these innocent children on your hands, we'll see how much God, how much value God finds in you. Right now, you are valuable to Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, Jesus Christ laid down his life upon the cross of Calvary for you. For you that has murder on your heart and hatred in your heart so that you might have eternal life. His Bible and His Word points to the sanctity of life. Every one of us has value in the sight of a holy God, including you. Every one of us has value. And Jesus Christ, He laid down His life for the ungodly. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Her adventure for a good man some might even dare die. But God commended His love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Young lady, did you know that Jesus Christ died for you? He shed His blood so you wouldn't have to shed the blood of this child. Man, the Bible says thou shalt not murder. That's the words of God. And no murderer has eternal life abiding within them. Please don't kill your baby. Think about your eternal salvation. Jesus said, set your affections on things above and not on things beneath. You need to think about the eternal things and not the temporal. The things that are not seen and not the things that are seen around you. So many of you are led by your emotions. You're led by your outer circumstances. Your careers. You have vanity in your looks. You don't want to lose that shapely figure. So many of you, you don't you don't want to you don't want to sacrifice some some financial gain for that child. Because you have your eyes fixed on the things that are that are temporal. You know that the scripture addresses that. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. I, I can just about tell you right now that if you would surrender your life to Jesus Christ, if you don't have the financial means to support this child, we will help you support this child. We will provide and meet your financial needs. But I'm here to tell you, ladies, if you just want to, you want to chase after money and you want to get wealthy, your your mind is on the wrong thing. Your heart's fixed on the wrong thing. You know, there was a rich young ruler that came to Jesus. And he said, Good Master, what must I do to have eternal life? It's a fair question, right? What must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus told him, Why do you call me good? For there is none good but God alone. Jesus right there was showing that none of us are good. None are good but God alone. And he says, have you kept the commandments? And he began to go through the commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. And to love thy neighbor as thyself. And that man said, all these things I have kept from my youth up. And Jesus told him, he said, one thing thou lackest. One thing, ladies, not many things, but one thing this rich young ruler lacked. He said, take of all your goods, sell it and give it to the poor. Then follow me. And you know, it says that rich young ruler, he went away grieved, he went away sorrowed. He turned his back to Jesus Christ. And certainly he turned his back on salvation. Now you know at that moment, if that rich young ruler would have sold all his goods and given it to the poor, it wouldn't have saved him. It wouldn't have saved him that work of, of selling his goods and giving it to the poor, but it would have shown. What that shows us is that rich young ruler, he had greed. He had covetousness. He, he loved that wealth more than he loved Jesus. When he could have given these things to the poor, and then followed Jesus. And I heard one of my brethren last night preaching about this. He, he mentioned, and I agree with him, that if that rich young ruler 
at that point would have taken his goods and, and sold it and given all to the poor and followed Jesus. And he would have continued to follow Jesus. You know what? I believe that God would have restored his wealth. He would have restored his wealth and that rich young ruler would have been able to invest his wealth into expanding the kingdom of God. But you know what? Jesus had addressed the covetousness in this man. That's the one thing the man lacked. He loved his wealth more than he loved Jesus. He cared more for money in this life and the things of this life than he cared for his own eternal salvation. Remember, it wasn't Jesus that was forcing himself upon this man. But it was this young man that said, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus told him and he walked away sorrowed. Ma'am, please come out and talk to us. Do black lives matter, ma'am? Do black lives matter? They certainly matter to us on this side. You can come out and pray with us. They don't matter to these people in here. They want to kill your black baby. <clears throat> Man, please don't murder your child. No, but many of you are the same as that rich young ruler. You've got something in your life, something that's keeping you from salvation, keeping you from eternal life. Jesus said, what good is a man that gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what good? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Ladies, what have you given in exchange for your soul? Have you chose a career? Have you chose advancement? Is this baby an inconvenience and you've chosen to abort the baby rather than to have eternal life? You've chosen to kill your baby and have a career rather than have eternal life? Have you chosen to please men? Someone in your family is displeased because you're pregnant or you've got a man that doesn't want to support this child? So you're a man pleaser, not a God pleaser? Care more for the things of man than the things of God? Ladies, it's time to get right with God. It's time to think about your eternal salvation. Take your eyes off this temporal. Man, we can help you. I'm telling you, if you come over here, we can help you financially with whatever need you have. Right next door, free pregnancy tests, free ultrasounds. They'll charge you for those things in here. Ladies, come out here. Talk with us. Pray with us. We are not your enemy. We're here for you, and we're here for that child. These women would tell you that we could care less about you, that we just want to harass women, that we want to yell at women, we want to upset you. That's not true. I don't want to upset you. But if the truth upsets you, then I will not apologize for telling you the truth. You know, truth is only hate to those that hate truth. And many of y'all hate the truth this morning. Why is that? The scripture makes it quite clear. It says open rebuke is better than secret love. Open rebuke is better than secret love. If you're going to murder your child this morning, you need a rebuke. And I'm doing that in the most loving way I can muster up. Open rebuke is better than secret love. It says faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Understand that these death workers and these death scorts that lead you in here to murder your baby, they're your enemies. Just because they tell you what you want to hear and you think they're there to help you, they're kisses of an enemy and they're deceitful, they're deceiving you. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. I'm your friend. I'm your friend because I speak the truth. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Ma'am, if you're pregnant this morning, know that child is a gift of the Lord. And the Bible says that thou shalt not murder. Abortion is murder. And the Bible says no murderer has eternal life abiding within them. Please consider your own soul and your own end, ma'am. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. A full soul loatheth the honeycomb, but to a hungry man every bitter thing is sweet. 
The truth may be a bitter pill to swallow, but I speak the truth. This is life in your womb. This is life in your womb. And to take this life is called murder. Abortion is murder. And if you take the life of this child, the blood of this child will be on your hands, ladies. The Bible says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. And the Bible says that no murderer has eternal life abiding within him. I plead with you to come out of this place. Repent. Repent and come out of this place. Choose life. The Bible says, Today I set before you death and life. Therefore choose life that thou and thy seed might live. You need to choose life for you and your seed. That your baby may live and that you might even have eternal life if you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, All that call upon me, I will in no wise turn any away. The Bible says to call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Come out and call upon Him today. Call upon Him. One day we will all stand before Him And give account of all that we've done On that day He will say to the faithful Enter in to the joy of your Lord For the Lord delights In the death of His servants We will see Him arise With healing in His wings With arms open wide And all heaven rejoicing Surrounded by His love will